The Real Estate Photography Podcast is brought to you by TourBuzz.net, high-definition virtual tour and photograph hosting. Now, with interactive floor plans. Sign up for your free trial today. Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Photography Podcast with Mike Muriello. Today, we have a business and software combo tip, and it's mostly business, and then we'll get into the software at the very end here. Um, something I do for the wedding side of my business is I send out a monthly newsletter, and that's something that I like to do to send it to all my past clients, um, keep them informed that I exist, and not really be too intrusive, but just a little, hey, how's it going? I exist. That's the point of my newsletter. I think the same thing can be done when it comes to real estate photography as well, especially if you're dealing with a numerous agents um, you know, in, in your area. You might want to keep them posted with work that you've done recently, not to be intrusive again, just to keep them posted. So in the past, um, well, actually, I should start with this. Anyone who's dealt with creating media-rich, because we're dealing with photos here, we want them to look really nice and appear where they should appear, uh, newsletters or HTML newsletters, you will you will know already that it is very difficult to do. And that's because email standards when it comes to HTML are different than web standards for HTML. Um, web standards have just continued to grow, whereas email has to be um, set in stone or and, and it's actually um, is actually locked in before these web standards began to grow and grow and grow. So what you have is, if you have a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, those services interpret the email, or I should say the HTML code differently. Sometimes it'll strip out certain components. Um, other times it'll change certain components so that it fits better within its window. That can be really frustrating when you're trying to do something like this. So in the past, this is something I would not recommend, but if you have no other option, try it. Um, in order to send out a newsletter, I would send out literally a giant JPEG file. This entire thing on the left side of the screen would be one giant JPEG file, which would be heavily compressed and it would only be, you know, 500 kilobytes. But the, the point is, if that image loaded, then they got to see the whole newsletter and everything was in the right place. But that was really only a band-aid on the problem. Recently, um, I found out about this program. It's This is a Mac exclusive, so PC users, you can tune out now if you want. It doesn't matter, but there's a program called Mail Designer by Equinix. I think I'm saying that correctly. And Mail Designer basically creates Apple Mail stationary, media-rich HTML um, templates for you. And for you, I mean, basically, you drag and drop the components that you want. So you can say, I want to add a block of text or text with a title. This is a giant picture. Here's a picture placeholder with, you know, two columns of text. And you can pick what you want. You drag it over here. And as you can see, you fill up the screen. It's pretty easy. Then you take your pictures and you throw them in. You can change all this stuff. I won't go into, I won't give you a tutorial on how to use Mail Designer. But just the point is, these are highly modifiable. And the reason I really like Mail Designer um, as, a, as a business tool is that all of this up here at the top is active. So this is an active banner with an actual link. These are active links. And the reason why I wanted that to be like that is because on my personal website, that's how the heading on every single page looks. So I wanted to make sure that when users, or I should say previous clients, got to, you know, they received my email, they were experiencing the website as opposed to a brand new experience that was sort of a dead end, one way street of communication. Here, when they're on my website, they know where to go. Here, as they get an email, they feel it at home, so to speak. They already know the layout of how this works. So what you can do is you can kind of make that identical to your website. You can change the color scheme. You can change the background, you know, whatever you want. Um, something I do in my newsletters is some discount. This one's fake. May specials, 10% off any photography work, blah, blah, blah. Nice little icon. And then you have, you know, here's something recent I did, blah, 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 couple of pictures. Again, vertical scrolling. You just scroll down. There's no left and right. Uh, here's something else, just vertical scrolling, and you're done. 
you go on about your day. Again, not intrusive. It's just supposed to be additional to their day, and they remember you exist, and they move on as expected. Now, when I hit this send button, uh, if it doesn't crash, and I'm going to be completely honest, I'm not reviewing their product entirely, but it's a 1.0 build. It crashes frequently. It can be very frustrating. But for the most part, it's wonderful. I have had a little bit of frustration with it so far. But if I were to go over to mail, which is I just hit the send button, this is what pops up. This is exactly how it will appear in their inbox, which is wonderful. Again, media rich. You've got these drop shadows. You've got these borders. You've got all this really nice stuff going on. And uh, these images, I'm clicking and dragging, they're nailed down. They're not going anywhere. These links are active, as you can see the little thing hovers over there against everything. And then here, this is pretty cool, if you wanted to change your text, you could. And it blocks off. This is edi editable text. Same here. So that is Mail Designer. And more importantly, the business end is sending out a newsletter in some frequency but make sure you don't bother your clients but you just keep them posted on your whereabouts and maybe they'll think of you all right well thanks for listening and have a good one